Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Jackie Van Ham, your girl in the know for all things motorcycle. Welcome to your fun fact Friday out here. I figured I'd open up today's show. I'd been thinking about what we were going to talk about today over here and then Bam! Like a lightning bolt! It ended up landing on my head last night because some news came out about one of the, if not the, if not the greatest American motorcycle designer to date, and that is Mr. Eric Buell. So welcome to today's show, everybody. I've got some news. <laughs> I've got a couple of dogs wrestling around behind me, so you have to excuse my little co-host back here. They're having a, having a little party. But for today's show, we're going to talk about Mr. Eric Buell. If you are not familiar with the Buell name, I do not know what kind of rock you have been living underneath. He's been involved in motorcycling for a million gazillion years and has a very, very close tie, close history, long time history with our friends at Harley Davidson. So this whole story is incredibly intricate, super fascinating. It is a regular soap opera of motorcycling, and we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of it today. As always, I can see your comments. Feel free to peek in and say hello over on my second screen. Welcome back to all of our top fans. And if you're watching this over on the YouTubes, thank you for giving us thumbs up and hit that subscribe button now. To all of our new viewers, hola, konnichiwa, guten tag, bonjour, and bonjour, no. Now let's get started with today's Fun Fact Friday. So, as you can see on the screen, uh, today's show is going to be dedicated to our friends over at Buell Motorcycling. If I've got any Buell Motorcycling fans uh, that are watching the show for today, let me resize that just a tiny little bit. That's a little huge over there. Um, today's show is dedicated to all things Buell Motorcycle, and it is a doozy. I had no idea about all of this incredible history um, within this brand. Eric Buell, let's see where we're at. Stand by. There we go. Um, Eric F. Buell was born in 1950 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is the founder, former chairman, and chief technical officer of Buell Motorcycle Company, which eventually merged with Harley Davidson Corporation. Buell is a pioneer of modern race motorcycle technology. I totally agree. Um, in the early years, Buell uh, was Eric Buell was born in Pennsylvania and learned to maintain machinery at a young age. In his teens, Buell began motorcycling. His first ride was an Italian Perilla 90cc motorcycle. Moped. He later attended the University of Pittsburgh. Buell raced motocross before becoming interested in road racing in his early 20s. He became a part-time road racer on a Ducati in the AMA Superbike class and a Yamaha TZ750 in Formula One. During this period, Buell was employed as a motorcycle mechanic during the day, an engineering student taking night classes at the University of Pittsburgh. After receiving his degree in engineering in 1979, Buell, began, or Buell took a job at Harley-Davidson after he moved to Milwaukee to obtain an interview and beat my way in the door, as Buell put it. While at Harley-Davidson, he was involved with concept motorcycles, including the Porsche-designed Nova V4 program, and was responsible for stability and refinements to the chassis design of the FXR series of cruisers, noted for their rubber-mounted engines. Buell used his racing experience to personally test Harley-Davidson's beyond normal racing limits, or riding limits, and implemented an electronic chassis testing regime at Harley-Davidson that greatly improved their handling. Handling. So the slide on your screen is going to be that Harley Davidson Nova. I also thought this was really fascinating. So, you know, I had to put it into my Fun Fact Friday show because this motorcycle only, motorcycle only made it to the prototype stages. And this is it. There is like one of one or one of two. Um, this whole program that they spent a gazillion dollars on went to just creating this one machine that lives in the Harley Davidson Museum. But it is a hell of a bike. So let's take a gander at it. Contrary to a fairly popular perception that product development at Harley-Davidson was stagnant during the AMF years, development of both the Evolution engine and the advanced Project Nova bikes began in that period. While the Evo engine brought major improvements to the air-cooled V-twin line, Project Nova, begun in 1976, involved by far the boldest innovations in the motor company's product design history any time before, before or since. 
At the heart of the project lay top secret engines to be developed in collaboration with Porsche that would have knocked much of the motorcycle world on its duff had they all been brought to production. Though technical specifics are, specifics are a little sketchy, even to this day, the line would have included modular liquid-cooled double overhead cam engines in 400 or 500cc increments, a 60-degree V-twin displacing 400cc or 500cc, a V-4 displacing 800cc or 1,000cc, and a V-6 displacing 1,200cc or 1,500cc. That would allow use of common bore and stroke dimensions that would enable, enable use of some common components such as pistons, conrods, rings, and so on across the entire line. Output would have been targeted for about 135 horsepower from the top of the line models. Each version would include counterbalancing. Um, the engines included what appeared to be conventional air-cooling fins, even though they all would be liquid-cooled. Porsche was selected to develop the engine in five-speed five transmissions for each variant in the Nova series. Harley design team handled chassis and all other aspects of product development. Um, so what appears to be a fuel tank atop, atop the frame would have been used for other purposes, including... Elect housing electronics, ducting air to the radiator, and the engine air intake. An electronic induction fan would assure adequate airflow to the radiator even when the bike was stationary. The reason why is not only would the Nova engine be liquid-cooled, radical chassis and bodywork design would move the fuel tank under the seat, and the radiator would lie flat under the seat behind the engine with high-flow air, in air intakes built into the new into the all-new wind tunnel designed frame mounted fairing. So super fascinating, right? So this is one thing that Eric Buell has been absolutely lauded for through, for, you know, since, since this era is the fact of utilizing really, really clever design in all of his bikes, including fuel in frame design, which to my mind is just super, super bonkers and way, way, way forward thinking. You know, this, this project began, like I just said, in the late 1970s. So look at that bike. Even in late 1970s, this looks super modern and like fresh. This is a really clever design and it should look modern and fresh because some of those components, even though they did not go into production on the Nova, went forward and were put into production on other machines. So in the span of several years, between 10 and $15 million was invested in bringing the Nova bikes to the market. More than two dozen operational engines and a dozen completed running prototype bikes were built and tested on the dyno, wind tunnel, and on the road. Um, Vaughn Beals, who came into Harley-Davidson via AMF in 1975 and was chairman and CEO after the buyback, was one of the company's top brass who actually rode the operational prototypes of the V4 version of the Nova bikes and extolled the bike's power and handling. The Nova designs were not only radical, they were roadable. Despite the enormous investment in develop and some of the tooling necessary to manufacture the Nova series of bikes, fate and finances put the bikes into the Harley-Davidson Museum instead of into production. Shortly before the buyback that occurred in June of 1981, which changed AMF Harley-Davidson back to simply Harley-Davidson AMF as the parent company and main source of capital for development and production, had a change of leadership at the top and a sudden change of heart about forging ahead with both the new Evo engine and the Nova project. Project. So they had to, they basically decided, you know, it was going to be one or the other, but it couldn't be both. And the Evo engine ended up winning out. All was not in vain as Nova's impact on Harley's future models. Nova's DNA influenced other future models. For example, the fairing that was so carefully designed and tested made it into production for use in the Nova Touring versions was used on the 1983 FXRT Sport Glide. The distinctive shape of the Nova's hard saddlebags found a place there as well. The team approach with Porsche that started with the Nova project continued on in other projects, including the eventual development of the liquid-cooled VRSCA Revolution V-Rod engine. So I thought that that was a super interesting tie into Harley-Davidson. Those are the beginnings of his roots with Harley-Davidson. Um, so anyway, so he worked with them. He worked on this Nova, um, 
And then also at that same same similar time, Buell learned of the small privately held general purpose engine maker Barton, which is based out of Great Britain. He brought their limited production racer, or he bought their limited production racer powered by a water-cooled 750cc square four two-stroke engine. The Barton was featured prominently in the 1980 motion picture Silver Dream Racer. The bike was poorly manufactured and was constructed from cheap materials. The engine was plagued with issues, but Buell felt that with his engineering background, he could improve the engine. As parts failed, he re-engineered them to increase reliability and in many cases saw performance gains with his modifications. The chassis was a lost cause, but Buell designed his own chassis. The engine often failed before completing a race. Buell first raced a prototype of his bike using the mostly stock Barton engine in the summer of 1982 at the AMA Nationals at the Pocono Speedway. He dubbed it the RW750, RW standing for Road Warrior. During testing at Talladega, the RW750 was clocked at a top speed of 178 miles per hour. He raced in the 500cc dominated Formula One Formula One class, he found some success at local club levels despite the grossly overpowered, unrefined engine. In 1982, Barton closed, and Buell was given the option to purchase the entire stock of spare engines and parts, drawings, and the rights to produce and sell the engine. Buell did so, but the shipment was delayed, and he missed the opportunity to make use of his new equipment and knowledge for the 1983 racing season. This delayed the development of that engine. Uh, let's see. Um, and so during this, despite this setback, Buell forged ahead and designed his first entry into the sport bike market, the RR1000. But before that, in 1987... Devin Batley smuggled Eric Buell onto a cruise ship for the Harley-Davidson annual dealer meeting. Batley told Harley-Davidson then CEO Vaughn Beals that Buell could give the company a performance image with no risk to Harley. They set up a table for Buell to speak with dealers. By the end of the cruise, he had deposits and orders for 25 bikes. Attendees such as Bill Bartles, Don Tilly, Devin Batley, and Frank Ulicki later became some of Buell's most successful dealers. In the 1990s, Buell reformed his house as the Buell Motorcycle Company in which Harley-Davidson invested a 51% interest. Harley-Davidson bought complete control of Buell Motorcycle in 2003 and distributed all Buell Motorcycles through select Harley-Davidson dealerships. Eric Buell remained responsible for the engineering and design of all Buell Motorcycles. Buell led the company to create some of those innovative, usable sport bikes under the XB series of Buell motorcycles. So this is really where it gets super fascinating is that, so he continues on. This is one of the first images, one of his first bikes from uh, the Eric Buell, Eric Buell and Harley Davidson collaboration. So this bike, if you have not seen this bike, this bike always gets on lists for like most interesting, weirdest bike ugly ugliest bike um this gets beaten up a lot but this bike was really really important for eric buell this was a flagship machine this was based off of a 1000 cc harley davidson engine this bike however totally launched the whole line of buell products and it led to this huge boom in development with harley davidson and you can start to see very clearly the lines of sport bike becoming more and more intense more and more perform per performance oriented and you start seeing a lot of really interesting innovation during the eric buell harley davidson years including this Buell RS-1200. So once they ran out of the 1,000cc engines that uh, Eric Buell had been using, he bumped over and started using the 1,200cc Harley-Davidson engines instead. This is the RS-1200 West Wind. I thought this was really interesting because if you take a look at the rear saddle at the back of this bike, that seat that, you know, it turns from a one-seater into a two-seater by flipping that up. I thought that was super just weird and interesting. I thought that was absolutely incredible. And then some more design throughout the years from Eric Buell and his relationship with Harley Davidson, including the Thunderbolt, which is the huge step into the sport tour design category.
The Buell Blast, which some of you may be familiar with, this is a single CC. Um, this is, I mean, this is a single engine, so something really different um, and wild for the folks over at Harley Davidson releasing a single. The XB9S Lightning, again, you're going to start seeing much, much more refined looks, much more refined styling in the super sport, sport bike, and performance category while he's with Harley. The XB12 X Ulysses. I wanted to throw this on here today in particular because this next week Harley Davidson is going to be launching digitally a big campaign for the Pan America. So for a lot of folks who have kind of been a little bit up and down and wishy-washy about whether Harley Davidson should be playing in the adventure category, I'm just going to say, you know, maybe look backwards through the files of Harley Davidson. They have been in this space before. They have been in this category. So I'm, I just want to take a a second and throw this Ulysses in there because this is a very like sport adventure type vibe to me. This was a real, real odd duck when it came out. And this is definitely still to this day, a very cult bike um, from, from Buell fans. The Buell R or the Buell 1125R is heading towards the end of his relationship um, with Harley Davidson. So this um, Eric Buell, so this is going to be towards the end of it, and then now you're going to see the pivot going into the, going into the new Eric Buell. So he ended up leaving Harley Davidson. They dissolved their relationship um, in 2009 due to finances. You know, 2009 was was during the downtime in this country. This was during a recession, and Harley had to make some slash and burn decisions. And Eric Buell and the Buell project was let go. But don't feel bad because it wasn't too much long after he was still producing some bikes and relaunched as EBR. And so now you're going to see the clear direct line from this 1125R to this 1125RR. And now you're seeing even more intense, super sport, sport bike, high performance design. He's completely stepped away from worrying or caring or whatever, or, or being held to these restrictions by the folks at Harley Davidson. You know, they were, I mean, of course, everybody wants to sell bikes when they start a motorcycle company, but Harley Davidson really, really, really wanted to sell those bikes. So they had to be kind of, kind of, you know, brought down to earth a little bit. They couldn't be the high horsepower monsters that Eric Buell really, really had his heart that had his heart into. So now you're going to start seeing the Eric Buell racing in 2009 following the shutdown of his previous company, Buell Motorcycle Company, by parent company and majority stakeholder Harley Davidson. EBR's first efforts were directed towards production of complete race-only motorcycles and parts based on the Buell 1125R production model under license from Harley Davidson to support privateer racers. On July 1st in 2013, Hero Motor Company, a motorcycle manufacturer based in India, had in previous to this, they had been sending money to EBR and they had been helping to, to produce some of these machines in previous years, st starting around 20 11. But in 2013, they stepped up, they threw a lot of money behind EPR, and they purchased a 49.2% stake in the company for $25 million. The two companies announced that EBR will distribute Hero motorcycles and scooters in North America starting in the summer of 2014. But on April 15th, 2015, Eric Buell Racing filed for receivership. He filed for a form of bankruptcy in his home state of Michigan. With a reported $20 million of liabilities, assessed all operations, including closing down their website. So this was a really, uh, you know, kind of an odd thing, but he had to do it for the protection of his company here in the United States. Um, there was $20 million being in, indebted to, you know, I don't know what happened. The only thing that he's commented on is that the money that he was going to be promised or he was hoping to secure around that time fell through. And he felt like the only option that he could make in order to secure his assets before everything was taken away from him was to go ahead and file for bankruptcy. But all that being said, don't count this company down because um, announced in 2016 that the um, they were going to go, the launch of EBR motorcycles in 2016 is very exciting for American motorcycles and the Buell Nation around the globe because what happened is EBR ended up selling all of their assets to a, a company called Liquid Assets. This is where it gets really 
really curious about today time. So in 2016, this company called Liquid Assets purchased everything lock, stock and barrel. And they thought that they were still going to sell all of these assets to yet another company. But it seems that it was just decided that they were going to be able to go into business for themselves. They decided as opposed to selling everything off, they were going to start producing motorcycles. And this and this company was jump started yet again. And they were going to go into production in the United States around 2016. Uh, 2016, the remnants of Air Bugle Racing was sold to Liquid Asset Partners for just over $2 million, with the proceeds going to the to creditors. Liquid Assets Partners, Partners stated an intention to try to find a buyer experienced in motorcycle manufacture to reestablish the business. But Liquid Asset Partners has kept the company assets intact and indicates they will do so until a buyer or major investor can be found. Motorcycle production resumed on March 1st of 2016, and the first new motorcycle, limited edition, Stars and Stripes themed 1190RX rolled off the assembly line on March 17th, 2016. EBR's website indicated that the company was establishing a new dealer network to sell the newly produced motorcycles. So this is so this lasted for like a handful of years. They were attempting to manufacture these bikes again because there was still engines and parts and all everything was kept together at the factory in Michigan and they felt like they had enough product to go ahead and jump start this business again and start producing bikes. This is when I ran across Eric Buell out on the trade trade show circuit and they were taking kind of like pre-orders for bikes. It wasn't totally clear. They were selling a couple of bikes, but it wasn't this huge production number because all this time that they were going and showing these bikes at trade shows, what they were really hoping for was another huge pile of money to show up. They were hoping for somebody else like another hero, like another Harley Davidson to step in, throw a bunch of cash at it and basically jumpstart this operation again. Um, that did not, that did not happen. <laughs> so for one more time, this company went went into went went dark again and it's been dark for the past several years and so people have been wondering what's going on with this factory what's going on with all these parts and they had tooling and they had engines and they had all sorts of stuff just sitting in a great big huge building in michigan that brings me to last night's news buell is back and one of the original folks that spearheaded this 2016 2017 liquid assets type situation is back in charge of it again so i will get to that i will get to that press release in just a moment but these are just some more of the really kick-ass looking bikes from that era of EBR. You can see that clearly, you know, with that huge wad of hero money, development was really, really nice. Production looked great. I mean, the fit and finish of these are really, really beautiful. This was a beautiful collection of bikes. Unfortunately, they just didn't get another great big huge handful of cash to keep this project rolling on along. This is when I saw Mr. Eric Buell out on the trade show circuit showing off these beautiful EBR bikes and there he is live and in person. He is a genuinely super, super nice guy and is not only passionate about motorcycles and incredibly talented, but just a really, really decent, very, very nice man. It was really nice to sit and look at his bikes and talk to him for a moment. And now I just mentioned what EBR, what, what is happening with those bikes, which I'll circle back to in just a second. But what is Eric Buell doing now? Now Eric Buell has been silent for the past several years and people are wondering, where is he? What's going on? What happened? Where is Eric, Eric Buell? Eric Buell is back to design and kick-ass motorcycles. Eric Buell's Fuel reveals electric bike and moped prototypes and discusses the future. Eric Buell has a storied history in the motorcycle industry with the latest chapter written at his electric bicycle and e-motorcycle startup Fuel, which is the most genius name I've ever heard in my life. Like Buell and Fuel, it's perfect. Um, now Eric is sharing his insight on the future of the electric two-wheeled industry and also showing us some brand new prototype designs that Fuel has been working on. Just over a year ago, Fuel went live with sales of its first long-range electric bicycle, a dual battery and belt drive model known as the Fuel Fluid. The company also has a $10,000 electric motorcycle in the works, which is on your screen right now. 
on until today, we had assumed that those two vehicles had been enough to keep Eric and the rest of the team at Fuel busy. But that wasn't the case. They've apparently been working on a number of new designs that they've just shared with us, focusing on higher spec electric bicycles and mopeds, as well as light electric motorcycles. So a couple more little prototypes and things. This is another great looking e-bicycle, the Fuel Fluid from Eric Buell at Fuel. Again, just really incredible, beautiful, sleek design. I'm stoked to see him getting into the e-bicycle and e-bike category. I'm I'm a fan. I love these vehicles and machines anyway, or bicycles and machines anyway. Um, but bicycle and e-bicycle sales have been really through the roof this past year because everybody is looking to recreate outside. There has been a bit of a boom in the bicycle business. And for folks that maybe don't want to pedal all the time, uh, e-bicycles are a really, really very kick ass uh, way of, of accomplishing a little bit of outdoor fitness, a little bit of outdoor recreating, and then you can just, you know, touch the little throttle button when, when you're tired of pedaling sometimes. Um, so for us chubby Midwesterners, e-bicycle seems like a hell of a great idea. And they've been, they went through a really, really nice boom period in 2020. So that's what's going on with Eric Buell over at Fuel currently is this great new project designing these incredible machines. I think that bike is just super, super slick, and they're trying to make it at the $10,000 price tag, which would make them one of the very first e-motorcycles to do so. So I am waiting on pins and needles. This is not this machine is not released as of yet. This is still in production type phases. So I'm really anxious to hear about more news from that. But speaking of news, oh, and then another really interesting, you know, like I just mentioned, he's he still is forging on ahead with really interesting and different prototypes, including this three wheeler with two wheels up front. This is a little bit of like a cargo themed or cargo idea machine. I think that that's really neat. I love I love cargo bikes and things like that. So I thought that was really great. And then now let's get down to it. So this Buell company is going to be um, jumping forward yet again. This was just released last night. You can see the press release on your screen from February 18th. Um, it's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So it is in the original Buell Motorcycles building. And this gentleman who is in charge of it, his name is Bill Melvin, if I remember correctly. He has been, he was involved in this 2016 Liquid Assets Partnership. He is from that era. So yeah, it's Bill Melvin. Um, and from 2016, he says the launch of EBR motorcycles in 2016 is very exciting for American motorcyclists and the Buell nation around the globe. The team at EBR is top notch and they've worked enthusiastically towards this day. It's a great day for America. America can, seed, can succeed in manufacturing a high performance sport bike that competes with the fastest motorcycles in the world. The excitement over EBR from riders is stunning and dealers are quickly expressing their interest in being an EBR dealer. EBR is ready to twist the throttle and enjoy the ride, says Mr. Bill Melvin. Um, this was back in 2016 when he released that statement. And like I said, unfortunately, I think they were secretly hoping the company at Liquid Assets and Bill Melvin were hoping for a big cash infusion to continue forward with that program. That didn't happen. Eric Buell went his own way and founded Fuel. But Bill Melvin and Liquid Assets has hold on to the B B Buell Motorcycles, intellectual property, their factory, literally everything that was Eric Buell Motorcycles and Buell Motorcycles specifically, they've held on to every single bit of that and they are jumpstarting that project yet again. So what does that mean? What does that mean for Eric Buell? What does that mean for motorcycles? You know, why the hell are we talking about this? Well, here's why the hell we are talking about this. You know, I think it's interesting any day that anybody wants to found a brand new motorcycling company, particularly one here in the United States, because clearly from somewhere or another, they don't particularly say in the uh, press release that they launched last night, because they wouldn't, that's not the place to discuss those things, but they obviously found some money from somebody. So they found some money. They are, they are going to be be bootstrapping this motorcycle company again, which means jobs, which means hiring people, which means things made in America. And I think that that is great. Does it involve Eric Buell directly? No, it does not. That part is a bummer. But if you've learned anything by this great big huge talk for the past 20 minutes, it's that Mr. Eric Buell is 
a survivor. He has been called more than once um, a cat with nine lives out here in motorcycling, and I think he's only on life number five, so he's got plenty more to go. There's plenty more ideas and innovation and things and stuff coming from Mr. Eric Buell. I am personally super pumped to see that fuel project. I can't wait to see these live and in person when they are out there and released to the wild. I think that that is really very excellent. And even if fuel you know, maybe it doesn't work out. I know we'll see or hear from Eric Buell again in the future. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. What did you think about today's show out there? That was an awful lot of talking about kick-ass motorcycles. Are any of you guys out there Buell fans? Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you own one of these Buells. You know, they did sell quite a decent amount of motorcycles in their heyday, so maybe some of you have one in your stable still. Let me know what you think in the comments. This was your Fun Fact Friday with your girl in the know, Jackie Van Ham. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, and I will see you next week. To everybody here in the middle part of America, America, stay warm. Warmer weather is coming. Thank goodness the power is slowly getting turned on to our friends down in Texas. Water is starting to head your way and you will have a great thaw next week. Uh, we will have a great thaw here in Kentucky. It's going to be 50 degrees in two days. So <laughs> we're, we are going to be warming up here for a little while as well. Thank goodness. So if you're going riding this weekend, stay safe. I will see each and every one of you next week. Hit that notifications on button. You are not going to want to miss it. Thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to my awesome show partner for the past year, Vroom Retract Vac, VroomYourRoom.com. Support the show and maybe add a little bit of beautiful design to your home or your desk or your uh, workshop, your garage, um, your man cave, wherever, wherever you might need a little bit of lighting, a little bit of good looking design. Uh, KentuckyBelt.com is my custom lighting design company, and I gladly would love to hook you up with some kick-ass lighting for your home, your workshop, your desk, wherever you need it at KentuckyBelt.com. Thank you so much, Topper Town family. Couldn't do it without you guys clicking, liking, and sharing all of these videos with all of your different pages and friends here. And then also make sure you go check us out over on the YouTube.